Hello, welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to do the mechanical calibration on the resistance for my Nordic Track S22i. Let's get to it. Over the past couple of rides, I've noticed that my, my resistance and my cadence levels, based on what the iFit trainer's recommendations are, seems to be off a little bit. It seemed to me that it was a little bit easier than it should have been. They were calling for a 60 cadence, uh, which would lead, while standing, which would lead to a heavier resistance. I didn't have enough resistance that would allow me to pedal while standing. So what I'm gonna do today is open up the bike and physically calibrate the resistance motor. This will be a little bit of trial and error as I'm gonna have to uh, leave the bike powered on while I do the calibrations because I'm sure that the the calibration uh, measurements are going to be very small physical adjustments on the bike. So to start off, the tools that I think I'm going to need for this is a three millimeter Allen, five millimeter Allen Phillips head screwdriver. I got a 15 millimeter wrench and needle nose pliers that I will use to actually make the adjustments. So the three millimeter Allen is what we'll use to take off this cap right here. So we'll take this one off. I did pre-loosen this one just to make sure that I did grab the right size. And this one was a little bit tight, and I'll explain to you when we put it back together why that was. Um, basically what you do when you're putting this back together is prior to tightening these down with the five, the five millimeter Allen, you'll put that in, tighten it, and then this will actually put enough pressure and, and squeeze, squeeze this dust cap enough that it will actually hold that in place and not allow it to walk out. So taking that off, um, what I should have done first of all was loosen these, then take the dust cap off. So I'm gonna loosen these next and get ready to take this part off. Next thing I need to do is get these and this off. So I'm gonna loosen these Phillips screws on the side. Take these all out. One down here. You will need to take the screws off of both sides. Most likely. I'm going to try and do it without taking it off the back side. See if we can manage to do it without taking the other side apart. because we should just need this left-hand side. Access. I do believe there is one, one screw on this side. Yeah, there's one screw right back here that we will need to take out because it's actually holding the front or this left hand left side panel together. So we will need to unscrew that one as well. So because of this, this panel right here, this panel right here covers this whole area. We are going to need to take this off to remove the, re, to remove this panel. 
So five millimeter on both sides, loosen this out and it should slide right off. And just a quick reminder, this is just owner's maintenance on this particular bike as I am not a Nordic track technician. I'm just a, an owner user of the S22i Studio Cycle. I didn't take them all the way out. I just loosened them, loosened them so that I could slide that off. And there is one more screw on the underside that is connecting both panels together. So let me get this one. Now, it is a little tricky to get this out through here. Kind of have to maneuver this around. There is a, a gap here that you kind of have to manipulate down and underneath this axle mechanism. So now once that's off, Our resistance motor is here, and we'll need to adjust these. I'm going to presume that it's small adjustments to allow for the machine to uh, adjust the resistance properly. So I'm just going to loosen these, and I'm not going to use needle nose pliers. I'm actually going to get the proper size tool for those. So it's an eight millimeter. There we go. Eight millimeter box wrench. So I'm just going to loosen this. And in order to make the resistance stronger, what I need to do is make this a little bit more difficult as I'm riding. So I think right now I'm probably about um, I'm about 20 RPMs too fast for what the uh, iFit trainer is calling for. So I'm going to figure it's probably about four or so resistance levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this one. So by sliding this, loosening this one, and pushing this and causing this one to pull closer is actually going to make it more difficult. So I'm going to loosen this one. There's one full turn, a half a turn, two full turns, a half a turn, oops, three full turns, three and a half. There's four full turns. And then I'll tighten this which should pull this pedal out of the way. Got to turn it the right direction. So it should be pulling that. Yep, I can see. I can see this moving closer to the wheel as I'm turning this. So a half a turn might be one resistance level as opposed to one full turn. So we'll test this and see how much of a difference this makes with riding with the instructor and if our cadence level matches what they're calling for.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pedal back on, making sure that it is lined up properly with the other side. I'm just going to tighten these down so they're firm for now, because I'm going to need to take this back off to reassemble. But I do need to test it to see how close it is to what I want it after four turns. So my guess is that my guess is that I was about four points, four or five points off from what the the instructor's recommended um, difficulty level was. So I figure four turns. Let's see if four turns gives us a good starting point. Okay, so through my trial and error, I found that an ab about one half turn on these will adjust the resistance level about one, one measurement. So I went a little too, too firm. Um, it was the, the, the trainer was calling for about 60 RPMs and I was down closer to 50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it back two, two levels. So one full turn backwards. So to loosen it, to, to make it easier, I'll move this one first. There's one half, or I guess one measurement, and there's the second measurement. So now I'll tighten this one. That should be about where it should be tight there, okay. So that should be about two measurements looser. So loosening this one, one half turn, is about one measurement, one resistance level lighter than what it's calling for on the bike. If you want to make it more difficult, you will loosen this one, one half a turn per resistance level you want to change. And then tighten the other side, which pulls this tight, which locks down, and the motor will then allow itself to, to move back and forth between the resistance levels. While I have the bike semi dismantled, wanted to kind of share a little bit about these, these two items here. I know a lot of people will feel and hear some knocking once in a while while they're riding. To help el eliminate that knocking, you can, you don't actually have to take it all apart. You can take this back cover off can see here access to this nut right here as well as this one right there you have to adjust them equally on either side which helps to eliminate that knocking sound that you might you might hear uh, it's just a matter of calibrating you know the slight angle of the the magnetic wheel so if you're hearing a knocking sound, you know, loosen these and then adjust them, you know, slight adjustments on both sides until that knocking goes away. You want to be very careful while doing that because in order to find out if the knocking's gone, the wheel would, would need to be spinning. So somebody would have to be on the bike pedaling while minor adjustments are being made. So be very careful while making any of those adjustments if that wheel is spinning. I went through the process a couple of times, uh, found where I thought that the, the bike and the trainer seemed to match up the best. And what I had to do was make the magnetic resistance mechanism, this part up here, further onto the wheel. So, what I did was loosened this one one half turn 
was about one resistance level. So I needed to move it about five. So I loosened this five, five half turns and then tightened this one until it was snug. Uh, like I said, after a couple of trial and errors, I found that that seemed to be pretty close. I'm gonna watch it very closely over the next couple of days while I'm riding, making sure that it seems to stay matched up. Uh, but if not, I will have to take the bike back apart again and do another adjustment. Um, one additional thing that I did while I was on the bike is I actually ran through the, the calibration, the, the incline calibration um, module within the application itself just to make sure that it was all calibrated together and hopefully we might have fixed that problem where it seemed a little too easy while riding. So next up, I'm going to put the bike back together and give you a couple of pointers on the dust cap when we get there. Um, as well as uh, the pedal itself. So um, I'm probably just going to time lapse this part because putting it back together is somewhat uh, about the same as it was taking it off. But remember this notch right here, if you get it around, if you get it around this part, get it on and off a little easier. What I neglected to do was take the, uh, the pedal off, so I got to do that first. So I'm just loosening that. Again, it's a five millimeter Allen. Loosening that, wiggle that off. Now we can put this back together using this little cutout here to bring it up and around and line it back up. And it does have some tension clips, some tension points right here. It's got little clips in these two areas here that will hold the two sides together. So now I'm just going to take a few minutes and put all of the screws back in. This one stayed, so I should just be able to tighten this one right back where it is. I've got another one around here on the back. Around the back side here. Okay, so now we've got all of those put back in. It's pretty simple. Now the next thing I want to share with you is the method and the sequence of putting the pedal back on. So you want to make sure that the pedal is lined up with the other side, opposite of the other side. If the other side is up, this side should be down, naturally. Now, prior to, to tightening these two points, these two bolts here, if you put this dust cap in first, twist this all the way in, and use the three millimeter, It doesn't seem like that should make a difference because it's just going into the, the metal piece there. So it doesn't seem like it should make a difference. But for some reason, putting this in first and then tightening these down, just like you would a car tire alternating back and forth, 
So one turn on each one. This actually pinches and will actually slide these together, which puts evidently just enough pressure to keep that dust cap from walking out while you're riding. Uh, I also swapped out the pedals. I also did swap out the pedals from the OEM bike pedals. Uh, this one came on the bike and it actually had this cage on this pedal. But when I found these pedals that have these two holes right here that line up perfectly with these two screws on the OEM cage, I was able to take these off of the OEM pedal, run this strap through these open ports here, screw these on with the, the bolts, and now those of us who uh, a, don't have the clip-in shoes, or if we're doing one of those uh, boot camp series workouts where you're on and off the bike, you can wear regular sneakers while still using the, the toe cage and get off the bike and perform the exercises. I'll leave a link in my description to where I got these pedals, uh, but uh, I think they were probably about 60 bucks if I remember right. Uh, but it's definitely worth it, especially if you want to transition to the, the clip style shoes, uh, which I found makes a big difference when you're just riding and staying on the bike for the entire time. Um, but it also allows you know, other users to use the bike as well. So for today's video for the Nordic Crack S22i, where we adjusted the, the mechanical calibration, on the resistance motor, I had to use an eight millimeter box wrench. There we go, eight millimeter. Phillips head screwdriver, which was used to take off the panel. Three millimeter Allen for the dust cap, dust cover. And a five millimeter for the pedal arm itself. So four tools is really all that was needed. The, I did find that half turn on the calibration arm itself is about one resistance level within the bike. So if you find yourself where it seems like it's a little too easy to ride, uh, you're, not, you're not really matched up with the trainer like I was, um, I found that to be a little frustrating. I was, uh, I felt like I was kind of jipping myself because I should be working harder than I really was. So I wanted to make that adjustment uh, to the bike. So, you know, thanks for coming along with me. Uh, it was a little bit of trial and error uh, to get it figured out, but hopefully if you're in a position where this might be helpful for you, um, it helps you out and you can get back on the bike and riding at the resistance levels that's most appropriate for you. So thanks for watching and uh, check the next video for most likely a resistance training program, uh, something in the gym. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, take care.